Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm blessing God for your life today. Today is Friday, praise God. And hey, what do we do on Fridays? Listen to me. Now, if you follow this broadcast, I will encourage you that every weekend you take time to listen to the whole message from Monday up to today, Friday. Now, spend your weekend in the Word. It will help you. Praise God. Yes, it will help you. And the Spirit of God will really, really help you. Because now, the Lord who is saying to us, go bear fruit, knows exactly what he's talking about. It means there is a grace for accuracy. Because he's not just saying go bear fruit. He's concerned about the quality of fruits that we bear. And if he's concerned about that, that means he's releasing a particular kind of grace for accuracy. And so when you hear us talking about these things we're talking about, it's in line with what the Spirit of God is doing today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready to make demand for your daily bread? Now, Friday's demand is very important because you need to receive on Saturday and on Sunday also. You remember the manna in, in, in scriptures. God told them they will gather every day until the sixth day. Now, on the sixth day, they will gather for two days because on the seventh day, there is no supply of manna from heaven. So, so, so this is exactly what... Now, now we, don't, we don't do broadcasts on Saturday and on Sunday. The next broadcast will be on Monday. So when you ask for your daily bread today, ask for two more extra days. Praise God. Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. And I demand all that I need for this weekend. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, believe God for miracles and you will have them. Remember what Jesus said. When you pray, believe that you receive it and you will have it. Now, you just prayed. Did you believe that you receive your daily bread? Then you will have it. Fear not. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, we, 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 we're still talking about the wisdom of the Word of God. And, and yesterday, I was sharing with you something so, so important. Now, we didn't even read our text. <laughs> I opened it, but we didn't read it. Can we look at it? Can we just look at it? First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. To three, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now take note. He says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Now, when he says desire the sincere milk of the word, he, I couldn't see, remember, they didn't have the King James Bible. They didn't have these 66 books when Peter was writing this okay now they had um letters other disciples have written they had um and and not like it was readily available to everybody like we have the bibles today see now some of these things were done in community settings for example if paul writes a letter to uh, the church at ephesus okay now the church has, at ephesus they received the letter. Of course, that letter has to be delivered to someone. Now, I'm going back to what I was talking about yesterday. This is just a prelude to it. So, Paul writes the letter and it's taken by hand. It's not, it doesn't go to a printing press and they mass produce it and take it to Ephesus and start distributing it everywhere. No, it goes by hand to someone. And then by their next gathering, by their next fellowship day, oh, brother Paul wrote us a letter. Can we just read it? And then they read that letter, okay? And, and I, I wouldn't be able to tell you how often they read the same letter, okay? But I know they read it. And 
after that they keep it in their library now they also wrote back to paul of course i mean whoever brought that letter if the person is going back they have to reply and that's why when you read the first corinthians you hear paul say concerning the things that you you spoke about or the things you asked this is my response okay so they must have sent a reply to him or they must have written to him and then he was replying to them now these were letters written with the, a particular people in view are you listening to what i'm saying yes paul was not writing first and second corinthians and he wasn't thinking about you i mean you in, in in america you in nigeria he wasn't thinking about you he was thinking about the corinthian church but now here is it when the the people who were compiling the scriptures to form the king james bible what we call the king james bible now they found these letters intriguing they they found that oh ah this is nice this is a good material let's add it now there were other materials that they found and they felt ah, uh, let's add it ah no to be too um, burdensome and and people just came up with this idea that so they you know, so they said these ones are canonized like these men really spent one full year in prayer before they started choosing the bible you'll be amazed that most of their choices were to please the king so any material they see that has content in it that will not please the king they they discard it they, they just put it aside now they didn't say those other materials are bad or wrong they didn't say that but it is people today that look at it and say since it's not in it means those ones are not canonized so because they are not canonized now that's what i was talking to you about yesterday about bible teachers and word teachers you know so what teachers see the word of god in everything apostle paul was preaching one day and he quoted in the book of Acts now. I think that was when he was preaching in Mass Hill. And he quoted from a poetry. You know this thing we say, in him we live and move and have our being. It's not God that said it. It's a poetry in Athens. See? Now, he quoted that to get to them. For example, he also said, Look, as we're coming here, we saw an inscription because you guys are so given to sacrifice and idolatry. He said, you guys offer sacrifice to many gods to the point that we saw an inscription here saying to the unknown God. So a sacrifice was kept in a particular place and written to the unknown God. So that's how gods have finished. Now they are start offering sacrifice to a God that is unknown. If there is a God out there, see sacrifice for you, praise God. Now does it, does it mean that we will say today that the Bible or God, the word of God say that there is an unknown God? And you get what I'm saying? Now you, you get what I'm saying? So the Bible itself is not the word of God, but it contains the word of God. So now, I was talking to you about Bible teachers and word teachers okay now a word teacher will take any material and when i say take any material actually it's not like he takes the material and tries to prove something from it no a word teacher can look at any material and the word of god will come to him and he will explain in depth even what that material is saying even something that is not the bible Yeah. A word teacher can look at a report. A, a, a word teacher can be looking at a report. Let's say a financial report of an organization, of a country, or whatever it is. He can be looking at the report and the word of God will come to him. He doesn't now, now it is the spirit that teaches. Not necessarily the person. Okay? And sometimes we like to label ourselves. Like, for example, I would mostly say um, the 
the grace God has given me is to teach his word. Not to teach Bible. I know Bible. Understand what I'm saying? I know Bible very well. But my calling from God, predominantly I have noticed, is to teach his word. Now, we, we assign that to ourselves. Now, actually, I heard God told me this many years ago. He said, I've called you to teach my word, okay? But then, in growing and understanding God, you begin to realize that. Because when we see that, our, our attention is teach God's word to people. So, you, you're looking at a, you want to gather a congregation. You want to, you want to, everybody to know you that this is, this is who I am, which is wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. But more than that, the, the teaching or the anointing or calling God have given to you is first to yourself. So you must take heed to yourself that you understand. There are, there are people who work in the prophetic and the prophetic doesn't affect their own personal lives. I'll give you an example. A man can stand here and be telling you what's happening in your bedroom, what's happening in your village, even this very hour. It tells you if you call now, you will hear that this is exactly what a man, a, a, a prophet can call me and say, I can see four chiefs in your village holding a meeting and this is what they are discussing. Call now and find out. And you will call and say, hey, the, you are very accurate, sir. See? And he say, this man can see you. But do you know this man, this same prophet, may not be able to tell what's happening in his own house. You hear disaster, you hear things that happen in his life. How, how come he didn't see it? You see? Now, is it that, you know, so we like, you know, God have called him to the people, not for himself. You hear people make statements like that, that the anointing upon my life is not for me, it's for you. Hey, hey you are the first partaker of the anointing on your life. It's a mind problem. It's not a God problem. It's a mind problem. So you must learn how you yourself, as a prophet, as a teacher, you yourself must learn how to tap from that grace. Because the grace comes on you. It's not embedded in your veins. It comes on you. I've seen this happen many times in my own life. I, I, I am going to preach. And I prepare a message and I, okay, Lord, what are we talking about? And that's what a, a, a minister is supposed to do. A minister doesn't just sit down and read, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to talk about faith. Okay, gets his concordance today now. We, we don't need those big concordance that we, 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 we used to have, you know. Now, with your phone, you can just get everything. Okay, let me find every scripture that I have to talk about faith. Okay, I like this one. Mm. Mm, this one doesn't really explain okay yeah this this is good you know a lot of people do that so they prepare that sermon and plan their delivery this is the one i'm going to read first this one wonderful but you see i found out i've done all that okay now i come to minister i stand before god's people and I begin to speak. I mean, start by from the first scripture that I've written down or that I've, I've kept in my spirit. Or the moment I start ministering, a scripture will just come to my spirit. I will just receive a scripture. It will just come to me there, right there. I never thought about the scripture. But now, so how do I know? Now I know it's not my message, it's his message. And then when I look at that scripture, it takes me into a dimension of that thing that he said I should talk about. I learned this many years ago because the Lord had, had to correct me on this. He says, son, when I tell you to preach a message, I'm not telling you to go preach what you know about the message. I'm telling you that this is what we are going to be communicating. So you have to depend on me to communicate it. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So if the Lord, you're praying, Lord, I'm going to minister next week in so and so place. You don't start the night before to prepare for your service, your 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 message tomorrow. Nah. And that's why sometimes God gives us teams for the week, for the month, 
Okay? Why does he do this? He's giving us focus. Are you following what I'm saying? We don't coin these things by ourselves. Maybe some do, I don't know. But personally, I don't coin these things by myself. So what do you do? You wait on the Lord. And sometimes God doesn't tell you the theme of the next month, the ninth before. He can tell you over a week before the end of the month. He can't tell you. He just say, look, next month, this is where the direction you're going. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So then the Lord will tell me, this is what you're talking about. So, ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Then I start to, then one day the Lord said to me, he said, listen to me. Because I realized I got there and all my scriptures changed. And then the message was powerful. I came back and said, Lord, why didn't you give me this scripture when I was preparing? Because now you're preaching and you're wondering, hey, okay. Because you're saying something as you're landing, a scripture is dropping in your heart. And then you just open to your Bible to Susan. So even you, you're not sure what you're going to open. I've seen those manifestations. God, I just hear my spirit open Susan. So I like, open it. So they open it and then I open it too. And I'm looking like, oh, <clears throat> it's self control that makes me not to go, yay! You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hmm, okay, what's going on here? Praise God, like, this is getting interesting. Now that's what gives us fire when we preach. I'm telling you the truth. When, when you see us excited when we preach, now I don't know about everybody, I can only speak for my own self, you understand? When you see us excited when we are preaching, this is the fire. You, you realize you're not the one doing the work. I could be so sweet. Even on this broadcast, it happens. Like now, what's going on now? The same thing. I, I knew what I wanted to share. Meanwhile, we're still talking in the same line. But then the utterance is being given to me as I speak. Okay, so that's what puts fire in us. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we add some formings to it. Like, we knew these things before. And I'm telling you a secret, praise God. So we act like we knew. I'm telling you the truth. The under, we may know the scriptures before. You get what I'm saying? And sometimes we may, we may know the scripture, but not be um, link chapter and verse to it. Okay, but then the Lord gives you the chapter and verse. Yeah, it, it comes sometimes, or sometimes the Lord gives you the scripture. It tells you what you're looking for. So you, your own intelligence. Now, okay, this is this statement is in the book of John. And then, oh yeah, it's in the now that's why it's good to know. Now, there's nothing wrong as a preacher to ask, especially today where we have media people. You can say, Oh, find me the scripture that talks about this. And then they, of course they know what to do. Type in the phrase and the scripture comes out and then bam, they put it there. And say, No, not this one. There's another one. Oh, okay, it's in John. You look at, oh yes, this is it. Now you, you understand what I'm saying? What's going on? The anointing is working. Now, as a minister, you must learn to tap from the anointing. Now that's what I do when I finish preaching like that. I listen to my message again. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because the one who was preaching was the Holy Spirit. Yes. So now I take time to listen to it again. Then I ask myself, do you believe this message that you have preached or that you have listened to? What am I doing? I am cursing. Now, you see, that's why sometimes preachers prosper more than the brethren yes i'll tell you the truth we were all in the service together yes i was the preacher but hey i attended the service too okay i was used as the vessel to communicate the word of the lord to you now i'm done i can walk out and say great service great sermon but no, I'm smart enough to realize that, hey, there are some things you said that you've never known before. And then you go back, replay that message. Thank God for today we record these things. You replay that message and then you do your own study. You're not studying to disprove what you said. You are like, hold on. How come I never thought about this before? Yeah, that's why you walk with the Holy Ghost. He knows more than you know. 
The same thing with the prophet. You can tell, you can't, and then things happen in your house, you don't know. Hey, you need to shut yourself in and begin to tap from that grace of the prophetic that you carry. It's not to go and be asking the Lord, Lord, how come? It's not fair. I'm a preacher. I, I see concerning other people, but I cannot see. Like one who functions in healing. You heal people, but you are struggling with sickness. Yet you come out and you lay hands on people and they get healed instantly. But here you are, battling with sickness. You see? Hey, God left that. Who told you? God left that so that I would be humble. Ah! Huh? You see, now that conclusion you gave was not the word of the Lord to you. You may have heard that from someone. And then, you know, say, after all, that was how God gave Apostle Paul. Now you see where the problem is. Apostle Paul had a buffeting spirit or whatever that thing was doesn't mean that was what God said. But then you take it, because Apostle Paul said, I had this troubling thing, oh, and then I prayed three times, and God says, no, my grace is sufficient unto you. My grace is sufficient unto you doesn't mean that thing will remain there. My grace is sufficient unto you. Don't you understand? I, I, I have an elder brother or an uncle who dishes out millions of money to help the needy okay and then he gives the money to me to go give them now i'm here i distribute i take from him and i distribute faithfully distribute faithfully and then one day i'm thinking it's fair it's not fair my uncle gives out a lot of money to a lot of people see me i i can't even i, I have needs though I have needs. And then you go to your uncle and say, Uncle, it's not fair. I, I give money. And then my uncle says, But my wealth is sufficient for you. Go back and say, hmm. he, didn't, he didn't give me. He just said his wealth is sufficient for me. Let me just be faithful in doing what he has said. Maybe one day. Now that's the mental. But what's your uncle saying? You know what I do. You think, think, think how to get something. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the communication. When God said to Paul, my grace is used use the grace. Sit down, learn, use the grace, and then connect to your deliverance. The same way you deliver other people. My time is up. Praise God. Actually, I've exceeded my time. Listen to me. You will not be ignorant. You will never be ignorant. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you this weekend. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you. May the Lord feed you by himself. And bless you abundantly. Let this weekend open up good treasures for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.